And it's, it's that time of the week again. It's that time of the week again. It's that time of the week again for news with the cues. Top story. It's a somber start this week to news with the cues because on Monday, New York City was dealt a really huge bruise. The perpetrator of the New York terror attack has claimed ISIS, and we say fuck, fuck that guy and send love to those in crisis. Instead of showing fear, NYC showed its pride and stayed gritty, proving it's an undeniably badass city. The alt-right, instead of showing sympathy, seemed elated because we'll probably throw Uzbekistan on the travel ban and then invade it. Will Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio put aside their squabbles and gear up and heal New York City like a giant bottle of cough syrup? As a Brooklynite, I pray it leads to real discussion. As New York native Chris Rock would say, Mo Tussin! Mo Tussin! Post 9-11, the NSA spied on us without suspicion of a crime, which makes you wonder which of our privacies will be invaded. This time. The current administration loves executive orders and ignoring facts, so you can soon expect the Very, very horrible bad guy information act. John McCain said the suspect should be thrown in Gitmo, he's so awful. No trial, no due process, however unlawful, he said. If you kill Americans, you're going in the box, see? But I guess those rules don't apply to a murderous Charlottesville Nazi. The event in New York was immediately labeled a terrorist attack. But we're still waiting on that label from Vegas just a few weeks back. Pointing to prejudices that people know are there but won't admit it. Apparently terrorist attack in America means... A brown guy did it. The nation was rocked this week with indictments in the Trump-Russia case. They got Manafort and Gates who helped in Trump's election race. Trump called it a Halloween witch hunt and looked the other way towards a wall of televisions playing fake news all day. Papadopoulos arrest apparently really got Trump annoyed. He replied, The FBI busted him. He was just a coffee boy. The Trump White House blamed crooked Hillary for the PR mess. Mrs. Clinton paused in her book tour to say, There's no such thing as bad press. Hashtag Me Too for Men? Sound crazy? Not if you're Anthony Rapp 14 and on Broadway with Kevin Spacey. Advances on minors are unacceptable, even if you're drunk or kidding. And gives a different connotation to the term adventures and babysitting. Apparently it takes a celebrity to admit he was abused for an even bigger celebrity to admit this whole straight thing was a ruse. After Spacey apologized profusely again and again, he wrote, I love men and women, but really mostly men. Spacey might have been looking for solidarity, but one thing's understood, the LGBTQ community said no thank you, President. Underwood. And so did Netflix. They canceled his House of Cards show. But that might be because it started to suck four and a half seasons ago. <laughs> Astros win the World Series! Yay! But now that it's ended, Dodgers fans feel Yuli Gurriel should have been immediately suspended. He apologized to Darvish for his squinty-eyed faces. Wow. The MLB said, we'll suspend him next year for being a racist now. More CEOs and politicians caught in the misconduct rush. Apparently, we have a 90-plus hornball in the first President Bush. In light of all these revelations, there's sure to be more upon us. Misogynistic rappers everywhere reply, Yo, at least we honest. The new Republican tax plan rollout has hit with a delay. The behind closed doors infighting is strange in a way. Rich white men in DC must have learned from Hollywood if that's plausible. They've always agreed on using their power positions to fuck as many people as possible. I'd like to take a second to publicly acknowledge that last year when Bernie Sanders promised the whole country free college, potential progressive voters decided they couldn't risk it. And Clinton supporters everywhere told everyone, be realistic. And while the country's been obsessed with Trump and his Russian dingleberries, the Senate approved an $80 billion increase in the military that brings our annual budget to $700 billion. Good heavens! And Bernie's free college idea would have only cost it forty-seven. Then if we use the leftovers over the next 10 years, we'd be set. We could literally wipe out the entire country's student debt. Think about it. No more student debt or loans forever. Nah, let's spend more on military than the next 10 countries put together. Why aren't Democrats doing more to take this increase off the table, especially when they consider the commander-in-chief reckless and Stable. Surely they're standing strong against someone so unfit. Wait, the Senate voted to approve the money. 89 to 8. Facebook, Google, and Twitter's influence on the election was a big one, but Putin wants to add Snapchat. You know, for fun. The Kremlin is behind the idea and lauded how genius it is. Putin said, We will sow dissent with thousands of young penises. <laughs> and if you think that's depressing and your brain is fried, don't worry, it gets worse. That's Domino died. Rest, Rest in peace. I know we're some negative Nancys, but check out Beck's new album. Yeah. It's really fun and dancey. For those of you asking us to use a teleprompter for these jokes, we don't have that. Or a green screen. We're busy and broke. So if you want to see that stuff and for us to shoot in a better location, your comments are wonderful. But we prefer donations. But we don't have a button for that. So if you still have the dough, buy tickets for you and your family to our upcoming Christmas show at chicagoshakes.com. Especially you, Cheryl. Hurry before it sells out. Q Brothers, Brothers Christmas Carol. It's that time of the week again. It's that time of the week again. It's that time of the week again for news with the cues. Oh.